This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning. Thanks for getting up with us on your Sunday. I'm China Green. This morning on Sunrise, multiple lawsuits against Pacific Corp claim they were negligent during the 2020 wildfires. Coming up, we hear from the owner of a local winery who says his crops were ruined by the fires. And Multnomah County's ban on flavored tobacco has been put on hold. In our top story this morning, by those in favor of the ban say flavored products are too easy for kids to get their hands on. But before we get to all that, let's check in with Daisy Caballero for a quick look at the forecast. Good morning, Daisy. Hey, good morning, China. Good morning to all of our viewers. Thanks for spending your Sunday morning with us. Wanted to take you out and kind of show you our pretty comfortable conditions for this hour uh, for much of our region. 43 out in Scappoose, 41 in Hillsborough, a little bit colder, colder, 38 out in Forest Grove. Seeing those 30s and 40s off of the coastline. 40s and 30s over east when we would typically be seeing those 20s and teens, so really not that bad this morning. Now comparing our current temperatures to 24 hours ago, we are four degrees cooler in Scappoos, five degrees cooler in Portland, but check out the coastline. 16 degrees cooler as of this morning for both Astoria and Tillamook as well, taking you out to our atmosphere. Not a lot going on as I'm showing you the last uh, the satellite and radar within the last six hours alone. And uh, we will just be seeing increasing cloud coverage and dealing with more of this dense fog. We actually do have a dense fog advisory for much of the Willamette Valley because of low visibility here, less than a quarter of a mile for much of the I-5 corridor. We'll talk more about this in detail coming up. Daisy, thank you. So a ban on flavored tobacco products was set to go into effect on Monday, the first day of the new year. But earlier this week, the Oregon Court of Appeals pressed pause. Smoke shops will be allowed to continue selling while litigation continues, but vape and smoke shops like Smokers Are Us in Northwest Portland say if the ban goes into effect, smoke shops say that they'll likely have to shut down. I'm sure we would find something to pivot to, but we would lose uh, such a tremendous amount of money. They say the majority of their sales are flavored tobacco, but others are in favor of the ban, including Michael Cox from Flavors Hook Oregon Kids, a group of more than 50 organizations across the state working to enact a ban on flavored tobacco. We feel that tobacco products flavored like cotton candy shouldn't be sold here in the state of Oregon, that it's too easy for kids under 18 to get their hands on a product. It's still unclear just how long the pause will last. If the ban goes into effect, Multnomah County would be the first county in Oregon to ban flavored tobacco. Lawsuits continue to rain down on Pacific Corp related to their alleged negligence during the 2020 Labor Day wildfires. KGW's Sydney Dorner spoke with a vineyard owner who says the company could have prevented some of the damage. Three Willamette Valley courts ruled Wednesday that several wineries across the valley can move forward with their lawsuits against Pacific Corp. They're claiming the utility company was negligent during the 2020 Labor Day wildfires, ruining their crops with smoke. Jim Bruneau, owner of Willamette Valley Vineyards, says the fruit was just starting to ripen for the harvest when the wildfires burned through the Cascades on Labor Day 2020. A fairly small fire grew into a conflagration and, and in large part because of the winds were so powerful that the transmission lines that were left on during those really high winds sparked additional fires, something like 12 to 13 or 14 additional fires. And it turned a small fire, a manageable fire, into a fire that was impossible to contain. He says that smoke then blew down into the Willamette Valley, ruining the crops they were working so hard on. Some of the grapes, of course, took on that smoke uh, as they were developing, and so that made the fruit unusable. We had to basically declassify that fruit, and instead of using it to make our delicious red Pinot Noirs, we had to make rosés. This resulted in a number of Oregon wineries and vineyards being severely financially impacted. We couldn't harvest the fruit, and so that meant you spent all year looking after the fruit, uh, putting all your effort into growing the fruit, and then you didn't have a crop. Now Bruno, alongside two other wineries, are continuing with their lawsuits against Pacific Corp, hoping to regain the money they lost. Some of our colleagues were decimated. They lost their entire crop, or in some cases, they were only able to make half of their production volume which made it impossible for them to be financially sustainable. 
Pacific Corp responded to the lawsuit saying the winery's smoke damage claims are baseless and threatening their ability to provide essential services through spurious lawsuits like these and excessive wildfire damages pursued by out-of-state plaintiff attorneys who have a substantial financial stake in these outcomes. Pacific Corp told us they have settled and will continue to settle all reasonable claims. Bruneau says the company is working with victims of these fires to figure out how to make them financially whole. He's optimistic that his industry will get the financial recovery they are seeking. And so part of what we're doing, of course, is making sure that we protect the reputation of the Oregon wine industry. We want to make sure this never happens again. Bruno says to prevent another disaster like this, it's vital the state makes sure utility companies have the resources to maintain transmission lines and protect them from severe weather conditions. The second thing we've got to do is make sure that our utilities, their customers and the communities are prepared to turn off those transmission lines. Lawyers representing Willamette Valley Vineyards are holding town hall meetings in January and February to let other wineries know how to submit claims for recovery. Sydney Dorner, KGW News.